Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Natalia. I'm a Cornell Tech MBA, and I'm sure most of you don't know who I am. But those of you who do, it's because of the arduous work of the Emerging Markets Institute. They narrow gaps, not only between Cornell campuses, but across nations and cultures. So I wanna start by thanking Lourdes Casanova and the EMI for really advocating for Cornell Tech to be a part of the mission to bring students, academics, and faculty together to think about the role that emerging markets have on the regional and global economy. As a global, as a chronic immigrant, I always had felt like I had somewhat of a disadvantage when socializing and fighting the stigmas of my nationality, when in class catching up with the assumed knowledge of the crowd, and more recently recruiting and ticking the box when asked if I needed a sponsorship for the visa and knowing what that would do to my candidacy. The Emerging Markets Institute and Cornell have changed my perspective. Through awareness of other markets, innovations on the tailwinds, I came to understand that having the context of differences in global panoramas is not a disadvantage, it's a superpower. Being able to detach yourself from the privilege of higher education in the US and thinking critically about the way we can build a better world for everyone is a mission that I'm sure everyone here will participate in. And that's a superpower. As the face of Cornell Tech in this ceremony, I of course have to talk about working in tech. So those of you who are going to work in tech, I want to stress the responsibility we have. This includes building accessible solutions, advocating for marginalized communities, considering low-end devices in areas with low connectivity, but also in choosing the companies we start and choosing the companies that we work for. Those choices will have an effect on whether or not we broaden or narrow the gaps. I encourage you to reflect on your time here at Cornell and choose impact. Impact the people around you, the conversations you have at home and at work, the teams you collaborate with, and make sure that in each interaction, you're narrowing the gap, filling it with color and with everything that you've learned here. Thank you so much and congratulations to the class of 2024. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so hello everyone. Um, so I'm honored to speak here at the my graduation, and I'm very excited uh, to share some words of motivations and per perhaps if I am lucky. I can offer you a glimpse of what makes this institute unique for me and my colleagues. I also honor to be in front of our dean. And if you don't know, I'm Colombian, so you can imagine the honor of having in front of my former president, Colombia. So thank you, Van Duque, for being here. So no pressure. Um, <laughs> so I want to thank Professor Lourdes, uh, my family, my mentors, uh, my partner, my friends, and everyone who has contributed to this, uh, to my professional and personal growth until this point. A couple of, mo of months before the MBA program started, uh, I wrote Professor Lourdes uh, to learn about Cornell and the EMI Institute. Lourdes replied immediately, invited me to join one of her classes virtually. And as a fun fact, this was actually my first class at Johnson. Um, where people openly discuss, and you know what was surprised that here people only, people openly discuss problems, but not just about the states, openly discuss problems about real countries, also like so we call emerging markets. I mentioned this in my application essay and during interviews, and I believe it contributed significantly to my acceptance. So I guess that I thanks the EMI for that, and now I'm here graduating with you, uh, all my colleagues. My journey uh, in the EMI is very long, and I started working with Anne, Shayla, and other EMI fellows who were researching uh, to create an ESG ranking. Uh, we added a D, so we call it ESGD for developed, uh, to classify countries. But here I learned a lot from, a, from the team, and most importantly, 
I saw how this research uh, was very important for businesses, how investors, VCs, bankers, business leaders were very interested to learn about these rankings. Later, I joined the a Cornell a EMI Conference 2022, again before uh, the MBA started. And with Clarice and William Montgomery, who were also other MBAs, uh, we work in telecoms on Indonesia, in Indonesia. And it was incredible working with them to understand these real challenges. And as a fun fact, uh, I just landed from Indonesia yesterday. <laughs> so it was great to have some context on this incredible culture, economy, and recognize many places during this case that we were doing during this case. This inspired me to lead the case competition in 2023, uh, where the topic was semiconductors in Brazil. Uh, this time I worked uh, with Colombian fellow interns um, and, two, uh, and two amazing MBAs, Kara and Shivani. Uh, we spent many hours discussing the topics, the details, and working to make this a good experience to all the participants. We worked incredibly close with Corning, uh, whom we cannot thank enough uh, for all their support. But to my surprise, uh, the entire time was a constant learning curve where I was learning something new every day from my colleagues and the incredible team. I could mention other projects, at least that will take me maybe 30 minutes, like the EMI restructuring project or the EMI Venture Capital Fund, uh, which are projects that are, we started and they are in progress. However, what all of these projects have in common is the incredible committed team that makes it possible. It's a small team, uh, but they are people who work very hard every day uh, to bring more resources and more talent to these countries, who are passionate about uh, what we so-called emerging markets, people who want to make the difference. People like Rob Canizares, who has given a life on these projects. Uh, Lourdes, who has spent more than 20 years on research and working here. And people uh, like my classmates, who believe uh, on these countries, who has hope, and who believe that this contest has potential. So as we call some business uh, leaders call, uh, these countries are undervalued. I want to finish by saying two things. One, the mission of the EMI is unique and necessary. All business leaders need, should, and wish to have an institute like ours mm -hmm. as part of their journey to gain acknowledge of the challenges and the opportunities in these countries. And second and lastly, uh, what makes the EMI unique, as I mentioned, is the people. And hopefully in the future, I can come back, give back and see the incredible projects and the impact that this institute can bring to our communities. So with that, I finish and thank you everyone. Thank you all. Um, we've had a glimpse of all the amazing student speakers. And before we continue, I would like us to take a moment of silence to honor one of our fellow fellows who was uh, on track to graduate this year, but we unfortunately lost him um, to, throughout the year. So in loving memory of Connor Kent Robinson, an EMI fellow of 2024, Connor Robinson was posthumously awarded a Doctor of Law degree as a member of Cornell's Law School, JD class of 2024. He was a beloved member of both the Law School and the Johnson communities, as well as the EMI Fellowship. If we could take 30 seconds to just be in silence and honor him. All right, as we head on to the second half of our program, I will hand it over to Iman to introduce our musical performer for the day. Thank you, everyone. Um, in loving memory of Connor, actually, the musical interlude is dedicated to him. This is a graduation, and we'd like to celebrate him as well. Um, and so we, I'd like to introduce my very talented classmate, Christopher Richardson, is a graduating two-year MBA. 
and he's actually placed um, in numerous top international competitions as a pianist. He's played here and honored so many people with his uh, skills. And so he's going to be playing a quite difficult piece for us, which is Wizard of Oz Fantasy by William Hertz. Thank you. 
That was amazing. All right, um, we'll transition over to the next set of student speakers and I will introduce all of them and then they'll come on over to share their speeches one by one. So starting off, we have Matthews Lakomsky was an MBA student. I really hope I did not butcher your name because I know I know that was a struggle in the other award ceremony. Um, so we have Matthias Lakomsky uh, from the MBA program, Sana Alibai from MBA, the EMBA MS Healthcare program, and Rafael Ademayo from the EMBA Americas program. Join me as we welcome our student speakers for the day. Thank you. Mr. President, Ivan Duque, Jeffrey Lim, distinguished faculty, staff, and of course, fellow graduating EMI fellows with families. I am honored to be with you today, sharing this special moment and serving as one of your speak speakers is a privilege. But truth be told, 
if not for a terrific friend that's here with us today, I may not have involved myself with EMI, but I was lucky. I had the right friend that pushed me beyond my comfort zone, and I had the guts to commit myself to something much bigger, to a mission that we all in this room share as members of the Cornell Emerging Markets Institute. That's why today I want to share two lessons with you. First, what EMI has come to signify to me, and second, the significance of the annual Cornell EMI Mark Mobius pitch competition. It is a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> As you may know, economics has this cool theory called the conver convergence theory. It argues beautifully that less developed countries have the potential to grow faster than the developed ones, and hence they, they eventually uh, close the income gap between, between them. The term emerging market is meant to signify a country in that process. And indeed, some countries such as South Korea, Taiwan, and Singapore have been elevated to the emerged market steps. My home country, Poland, that operated under communism between 1945 and 1989, was elevated to this status in 2018, 19 years after committing to capitalism. Today, the GDP per capita stands at half of the EU average, and I am amazed at the progress that I have observed. You may wonder why I am sharing this with you. And you see, my experience at EMI has made me realize that in the process, we must not lose sight of the goal. At this institute, we come together to discuss challenges and opportunities of emerging markets because we know that the convergence is not guaranteed. It takes bright minds, great leadership, and commitment to nurturing the rule of law, political stability, and efficient capital markets, among other factors. And we at EMI are the ones that bring attention to, em to emerging markets and are tasked with ensuring that the process never becomes a goal in itself, but a true vehicle to prosperity for emerging economies. And for me, EMI has come to signify exactly that goal. Next, I want to talk about the EMI pitch competition. As you know, EMI hosts two annual competitions the EMI Corning case competition and the EMI Mike Mobius pitch competition. Last year, I had the honor of coaching the pitch competition and want to tell you about its significance. As discussed before, convergence does not happen automatically. So every year EMI invites recent graduated entrepreneurs to pitch their businesses and compete for $10,000. The businesses must target issues specific to emerging markets but as, it, but as you'll see in just a moment, they often start there, but the potential goes way beyond. In the US, we celebrate entrepreneurs and believe in their power to change our lives. And I've learned that the pitch competition ser serves to celebrate and empower entrepreneurs from emerging markets by providing an eco chamber for their ideas and putting them in front of people, angel investors that can help take their businesses to the next level. Last year winners, from Argentina, satellites on fire, designed an alert system for early detection of wildfires that leverages satellite imagery, cameras, and AI to help responders minimize the outbreaks and damages from wildfires. The accuracy of their system is higher than that of NASA's and is being impl implemented across Argentina. Think about it. Climate change is causing wildfires in California and Canada, affecting the air quality across the US. And soon, it may be the technology of our pitch competition uh, winners that comes out on top and tackles a problem that is no longer foreign to us. EMI strives to empower entrepreneurs in emerging markets, and it's those entrepreneurs that may soon pave the way for prosperity in their countries and ours. And I say, let's be proud that at this institute, institute we get to team up with them to shape the brighter future. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sana and I am from the uh, EMBA and MS in healthcare leadership cohort. And I am honored to say a few words on behalf of my class. Our cohort has had the privilege of being involved with the Emerging Markets Institute in a close capacity this year. We had a chance to take part in the conference 
work on interesting um, capstone projects. And we joined the annual trek to Colombia, where we had the opportunity to examine local businesses and uh, get involved in solving some problems for them. Uh, emerging markets have several different meanings for our cohort. Uh, some of us are from an emerging market, uh, work in emerging markets, or wish to pursue careers with more global context. It is an interesting time as new graduates. Emerging markets present uh, a unique confluence of challenges and opportunities, particularly in the realm of healthcare. These regions, characterized by rapid economic growth and evolving infrastructures, are home to a significant portion of the global population. So the opportunities for innovation, collaboration, and transformative impact are many. As someone who works directly within an emerging market, I can attest to the impact the Institute has had on me and my family business. As part of the EMI capstone project, my classmates conducted an in-depth market analysis, developed a comprehensive go-to market plan for my business, and came up with innovative solutions to address some of our concerns. The Institute prepares us to drive change and has the power to connect individuals uh, with a global network of professionals. In our time at the Emerging Markets Institute, we've had the extraordinary pleasure of working under the guidance of Lourdes Casanova, really the highlight of EMI. I think everybody can agree. The be a beacon in the field of international business. Uh, her profound expertise and insightful perspective on emerging markets have enriched our educational journey immeasurably. Lourdes' extensive experience and influence have provided us with a comprehensive understanding of the complexities and the nuances um, inherent in these rapidly evolving economies. She has been instrumental in shaping our approach to global business challenges, instilling in us a deep appreciation for the unique opportunities and responsibilities that come with engaging in emerging markets. Her perspective on international business and emerging markets in particular shines a light on the dynamic interplay between economic growth, innovation, and sustainable development. We feel profoundly privileged to have had the opportunity to learn from her and carry forward the invaluable lessons she has imparted. To my fellow graduates, congratulations on reaching this milestone. Each of us has a unique path ahead, but we share a common purpose to leverage our skills and knowledge to drive positive change. Let's remember the lessons we've learned and the values we've cultivated here and strive to be leaders who are not only successful, but compassionate, innovative, and inclusive. Thank you and congratulations to the concept. Wow. I think, was I supposed to, am I supposed to introduce Raphael? Raphael? Yeah. So Raphael was traveling in from Canada today um, and he's not here yet, but we do wanna thank him for also being a contributing member to the executive MBA program within EMI. Um, with that being said, we've come to the part of the program that I know you've all been anticipating. We'll read out the names of all our fellows in alpha order, and Abidas will be leading us in that process. So one thing, we, we just they, they also the president to help us with the yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so president, yeah. President Ivan, we'd like to ask you to also help us in handing out the certificates to the students. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, for the fellows, if you could please. Um, no, that's one. That's it. That's it, right. That's it. Yeah. By alphabetical order, the problem is that you don't know each other. Yes. OK, so you. Here you go. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Yeah, um, do you know who is here or not? Tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. OK, yeah. so please. Just name one. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I will start. Okay, okay I'll be. All right. Yeah. Or it's Molebi Adabi. Why don't you read the name so that you can okay. continue? Thank Rafael Arellano. Yeah. 
Olabunbi Akinbajo. Stana Alibai. Sorry, Abby, read the next name. Yeah, Janica Alvarez. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Jackie Ong. Way to go. Congratulations. Thank you. Shauna Wan. Okay, why don't you go like that? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, it's like that. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Well done. Rohan Barai. Jason Singh Bala. Shriya Tala. Read the next one. Shao Chen. Shao Chen. Shao Chen. So I need to call it. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Congratulations. <laughs> Scott Fernandez. Well done. Congratulations. Mariah Franks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Franklin. Yeah. Julian Galarza. <laughs> Congrats. Congrats. Neil Halam. I think this one is going to. No, no, very good. 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 Continue, continue. Chukwudindu Jua. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, continue. I saw him. Yeah, I saw him also. Chukwudindu Jua. Yeah, he went down for all. Ruth Hankum. <laughs> the 
congrats. Thank you very much. Slightly delayed, but not Jasmine. Good morning. <laughs> Marcelo Kawabata. All the time, congrats. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Wolfgang Cole. <laughs> Tanisha Cole. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Matush Lakomsky. Well done. All the best. Yeah, you mentioned it. Congratulations, Jess. Yeah, Simon Lawrence. Five speech. Congrats. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andrew Lim. Very good. Matching there. <laughs> Very smart working. Congratulations. Laura March. <laughs> Ebony Martin, <laughs> Robert McCray, <laughs> Kayla Menace. <laughs> Okay, continue. continue. Harsh Modi. Ah, okay. Ah. Louis Mandoka. Well Oh, um, congratulations, congratulations. Great to see you. Congratulations. Shivani Mulji. Congrats. Shitaja <laughs> Nayak. Well done. I got so many, so many decorations. Natalie Naranio. <laughs> Michelle Niven. <laughs> Emanuela Nadili Okonkwo. Okay, Ada Nopeti. Uh, Angie Okupe. Angie <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job. Good job. 
Diego Quevedo. Well done. Wow. <laughs> Maria Rennie Bush. Connor Robertson. <laughs> Zach Sabadosa. All the best. Congrats. Cristiani Sagala. Okay. Iman Saeed. <laughs> Samuel Scott. All the best. Congratulations. Juan Sebastian Cerno. Rachel and Sleepy, all the best. Sheetal Sharma. <laughs> Melanie Hirschman Shukra. Well done. Congrats. Congratulations. Aditya Sindhu. Well done, congrats. Eugenio Suto. Patrick Steven. Good job. <laughs> congrats. Kara Steyer. Congratulations, Rob. Richard Tong. Well done. Congrats. Congratulations. Shanta Tran. Shubhendra yeah. Vatsa. Congratulations. Yuchan Wang. Well done. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, he just in Spanish. Tian Chung Wong. Norma Wibowo. Well done. Ying Zhue. Well done. Congrats. Cindy Young. Chase Young. <laughs> Alan Yuan. Congratulations. Angela Vega. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, it's Yeah, it's Yeah, 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 um, could we give one more round of applause for all our fellows?
Congratulations once again. And now we'll have our distinguished speaker, Ivan Duque, President of Colombia. Ivan Duque is the President of Colombia 2018 to 2022 and an EMI Distinguished Fellow. He is currently a Distinguished Fellow at the Woodrow Wilson Center, a Transformational Distinguished Fellow at Oxford University, and holds numerous fellowship and distinguished advisory positions. He is a global expert in security affairs, sustainability, conservation, green finance, and energy transition. As former president of Colombia, he had a frontal fight against drug, drug trafficking and organized crime groups, presenting the highest number of captures of high and middle level crime leaders and dismantling illegal groups in a four year period. Duque also launched the Concordia Amazon Initiative in 2022. Duque established the largest social protection network in Colombian history with the health sector's improvement and continues to serve on a number of advisory boards to this day. We're very honored to have you here, so join me as we welcome him. Good afternoon. It's a great honor for me to speak before such an amazing audience. I want to, first of all, express my gratitude to my dear friend, Professor Lourdes Casanova, who I have big admiration, and I think she deserves another big round of applause. I also want to express my gratitude to Dean Carolin and also to Dean Gaor. Jeff, it has been a, an amazing opportunity to share the stage with you today. And I also want to congratulate all the graduates in this amazing ceremony. One of the things that I have learned in life is that you should never lose the possibility of being impressed. Impressed by the things that surround you, by the achievements we make, by the people we meet, by the experiences we have. And it has been a tremendous experience for me to be a distinguished fellow at the Emerging Markets Institute here at Cornell University. This is my first time in Ithaca, and I have to say that coming to Ithaca has left me many, many lessons. Mm -hmm. I have learned a lot from the founding fathers of this university. When we think about what Cornell University means, and we were able to identify that in 1865, Ezra Cornell decided to put together this university with the idea of any student any study. It's a sense of inclusion. Being the first university to open its doors to women and also to Afri the African American community in the United States in a very difficult time. But it meant that they wanted to have an education that gave opportunity and that was able to change the experiences and the life of those who enter this campus. So today I have to say that you are all privileged of graduating from Cornell University from amazing programs, but this is just a step in your life. Cornell doesn't want you to have this experience as the experience of your life, but as a step in your major achievements. And many of you are embracing a career in business to generate opportunities, to transform the life of others, to trigger investment and to change the societies in which you operate. And that might be the drive of why you have chosen to be in an emerging markets institute. Because in the emerging markets, there are a lot of things to achieve yet. We would love to see more countries in the closest future to become high income countries. We would love to see the closing of many social divides and allowing many to have the privilege and opportunities that you are experiencing today. But we live in a society 
that is facing lots of challenges. And those are the challenges that I call the four C's of today. Climate, conflict, crisis, and cyber. We are facing a climate crisis that is knocking at every country's door with different impacts. So I come from Colombia, which is one of the countries that is in the top 20 of the most vulnerable uh, against the effects of climate change. Why? Because we see the raise in the temperature that has an impact on transmittable disease. We see also the rises on water temperature in our oceans that are bringing us more frequently catastrophic events. We're seeing how coastal erosion is affecting the lives of many communities. But that's not exclusive to Colombia. It happens a lot in the global south and in the emerging markets. And we need to mobilize massively finance. We need to think creatively on how to build market-driven nature-based solutions. And you are gonna be called for that task in the jobs that you're going to embrace. But we're also living in a world of tremendous conflicts. Conflicts that are driven by those who want to destroy liberty, those who want to impose their prejudice on others, and those who just want to polarize for the sake of their political ambitions. We're also living in cyber challenges because we don't know if AI is gonna be the solution or if it's not well managed, it's not gonna be AI, but III. <laughs> and that's the challenge we face. How are we gonna be smarter in the use of that technology putting ethics, values, and principles for those things that are meaningful in the use of technology, but preventing technology to be used as a weapon. Those are the challenges you're going to face. It can be big challenges, can be small challenges, but those are the challenges that you are going to face in the leadership roles that you're going to assume. And obviously, when we look at the crises that are triggered today in economic terms, in supply chains, in food security, we're going to live with those four Cs in a world of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And it's hard to understand, but today almost 70% of the world population lives under authoritarian regimes. A decade ago, it was 48%. And that means there is a liberty deficit. And if we are not conscious about that, we're going to have a tremendous prosperity deficit. Because I can guarantee that there are many rich countries that are under authoritarian regimes, but they are not prosperous. Because the only way a society can prosper is a society in which there are liberties and in which they are economic liberties for innovators and entrepreneurs to identify ideas and making them succeed without depending on the government's hand. And the question is, how can we face that challenge in a world of polarization, of fake news, and at the same time, of those who want to promote confrontation and division. And what is the role of the private sector? I come from the political world, but I have also worked in the private sector and in the multilateral sector. And I have conversations with businessmen and businesswomen around the world, and sometimes they just tell me they don't want to look at politics and they don't want to look at government decisions just because they believe politics, it's something that should be left to others. But let me tell you something. If the private sector doesn't want to get into the discussions of policy and politics, policy and politics will get into the private sector. 
and not necessarily for a good reason or with a good purpose. So we need a private sector that thinks about democracy, liberties, entrepreneurship, and the capacity to generate happiness, as the founding fathers of the United States said when they mentioned the pursuit of happiness as one of the cornerstones of this nation in which you have studied. So my suggestion today and my invitation is that you as business leaders should engage in the discussion of liberty and freedom. And that means to have those conversations with your teams, with your employees, with your working mates. Because if we leave that debate aside, we're not gonna put fully all our innovation in order to produce the changes that are required. But also, if you're considering the debate about liberty and freedom, it should be tackled also with the idea that we have to generate economic growth. And economic growth only happens in a nation that is vibrant in terms of generating new entrepreneurships. I have not seen any nation prosper without a vibrant private sector. I have never seen a nation transform itself without the capacity of having disruptive innovators. And that also means that we don't have to be shy to defend the moral superiority of a market-driven economy. Because a market-driven economy is the only mechanism to show that the social gaps can be closed in the short, medium, and long term. So please embrace those values. And that also means that you need to defend a coordinated way of working with technocracy, with evidence, with managerial skills. There are many places in the emerging markets that have produced tremendous change in the last two decades, but those changes are being lost where populists and demagogues want to impose prejudice and ideological appeals that no necessarily mean that they can really transform societies. So a private sector and leaders like you will be crucial to have that debate. And let me also place another recommendation. And it's regarding the ethics and the motivation of others with values that can trigger in those who will be following you, an example so that this generates a virtuous cycle. The ethical debate is crucial in the kind of technologies we are promoting. The ethical debate is critical in terms of climate action. The ethical debate is critical in the kind of private sector that we want to create. So let's assume that challenge and let's do it also considering that the road is not going to be easy. It's going to be bumpy. But here in Cornell, people don't like easy. You don't like easy. You have to look for those turning whites, for those tides, to, for you to swim against those tides if it's necessary. Because the privilege that you have received today and that you will, receiving, will be receiving in your diplomas are exclusive in this world. So if you use that exclusive power that you're getting in your hands with these diplomas in order to promote leading by example to others, I am certain that they will have the impact that we want you to have in your hearts and minds. We need to generate those opportunities and I have seen in many of you when we have had conversations that you have said to me, I wanna go back to my country. I wanna go back to those emerging markets and be able to say that beyond the noise and sometimes beyond the evidence, there's a real opportunity of doing sustainable, scalable and replicable business. But that implies also winning the ideological narrative wars that some are triggering in the emerging markets. I remember a quote from Ezra Cornell. 
He said that idleness is to the mind what dust or rust is to iron. What he meant is that those who have the idleness of not seeking new ventures, new opportunities, new experiences will have their minds and hearts weakened. And we have to defeat the idleness of those who want to take the conversations of liberty, freedom, and democracy aside. Those who want to weaken the system so that they can control who wins and who loses. And we have to embrace that battle. It's not an easy one, but involves our capacity to transcend. Because graduating from this university implies, because of this exclusive experience that you have to transcend. And transcend is giving back, is showing up, leading by example, and motivating others for the purpose of winning in a world where a market-driven economy with the moral greatness that has been shown over the history of humanity can really defeat demagoguery and populism. So let's move on. Let's move on with this cause. Let's lead in the emerging markets with clear purpose and objectives. I asked Lourdes Casanova two days ago, what would she feel as a major accomplishment of the Emerging Markets Institute and its influence 20 years from now? And she said, I would love to see countries like Brazil or Colombia or Peru, just mentioning Latin America, becoming high income countries. They won't become high income countries if we don't defend a market driven economy and a system of liberties and democracy. So fellow graduates, as a former president of a country that has lived through many challenges, I can tell you that change happens over time, that there has to be graduality, that there has to be motion, permanent motion. But the most important thing is that we have the right leadership in the private sector. And I am sure you are that kind of leadership. Thank you very much. I didn't know I was getting that diploma. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. That's, congratulations. It's wonderful. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, former President Duque. That was incredible. I really feel like I learn a lot whenever I get the opportunity and privilege to hear you speak. So um, I, Angie and I would like to take a minute to introduce two very spe special people. First off, Dean Caroli. So first off, we'd like to introduce Dean Andrew Caroli, who's the Charles Field Knight Dean of the Cornell S.E. Johnson College of Business. I know we have a lot of deans. Um, this, is, this is the big dean, I guess, uh, the biggest dean. <laughs> Uh, we have here, so um, all of them are incredible. So he's also a professional, uh, a professor of economics at Cornell's College of Arts and Sciences. He's a highly regarded scholar in the area of investment management with a specialization in the study of international markets. He's published extensively in finance and economics, um, including pieces for the Journal of Finance, and he's pu published se several books and monographs. Um, his research has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, and more. 
I could go on for a very long time, uh, but he has both of his MBA and his PhD degrees from uh, the University of Chicago. So without further ado, I'd like to leave it Thank to him. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, good afternoon. Congratulations. Does this guy feel great? It's, it's so wonderful. I'm just looking, I'm taking it all in. I'm just taking it all in and just enjoying, enjoying with you. Um, I, I feel um, gratitude in my heart right now, more than anything else. I feel gratitude towards, um, well, I'll start with distinguished President Duque, our dear colleague, Jeffrey Lim, who is so generous in all things towards our, our, uh, our college and our school. Um, I feel incredible gratitude to uh, you, the graduates of this wonderful uh, Emerging Markets Institute and uh, I, I'm excited to see what you will do when you go from here. I feel gratitude towards your parents and families who are here celebrating with you. I feel uh, enormous gratitude to all the people that work so hard to, to manage this institute, led by our distinguished Lourdes Casanova. Shall we, shall we recognize him? I like to tell the story of when we started this institute. Uh, it's now 13 years ago. Um, it's 14. Uh, 14, yeah, 14 years ago. Um, I was hired to join Cornell University um, to help uh, the Johnson Graduate School of Management. Then when it was a separate school apart from the others in the College of Business to internationalize its curriculum. I think about how to meet the mark and challenge of the world and, and the many complexities that the world represents. And you heard some of this from our, our dear distinguished uh, President Duque. Um, and the, the idea that we had when we started this institute um, was that we wanted, to, we wanted to prepare future business leaders to be able to take on the most challenging, most complex, types of environments in which a business can operate. Because we, we're part of Cornell University. We, we represent, we owe this to the world. Cornell University being the institution that it is, an institution of excellence, it, it needed to deliver future leaders who will make positive societal change. And it, the, the people that would come to this university would come from anywhere and they could go anywhere. And we had the idea that the, the, the students that would become fellows of the EMI Institute would, would have the um, resilience to be able to tackle the most complex types of decisions. You know, it's it just a pure textbook on, on decision-making just wouldn't quite work. It would have to be uh, it would be, have to be managed in a way that the environment, uh, whether it was because of the capacity constraints of the market, maybe some operational inefficiencies in the markets, or uh, legal legal problems that might might arise, or certainly geopolitical and political uncertainties, um, all of those things would be wrapped up into the challenge of making decisions. And we knew we needed to do that because that's what we do. Cornell does, they, they, we deliver leaders who are resilient, able, and, um, and prepared. And so I'm really proud to share that with you. You represent the vision that we had now 14 years ago. And, uh, and I wish you all very, nothing but the best in whatever, where, wherever the road carries you. And uh, I'll see you at graduation tomorrow. Cheers. Up to you. Yeah, thank you. I, I get the memo. <laughs> All right, um, so we're coming close to the close of our program and now we'll have Lourdes give us um, a word of thanks. She says she has two words only, so 
we but before she gives us the two words, I would like to uh just read a quick brief intro about Lotus um because we've we've had her name a lot um in this program and she really has been very dedicated towards EMI. So I want to give a little bit of honor on that. Uh, Lourdes Casanova is a senior lecturer and director of the Emerging Markets Institute here at the Cornell S.C. Johnson School of Management. In 2014 and 2015, she was awarded the distinction of being one of the 50 most influential Ibo-American intellectuals. And in 2017, rated as one of the 30 most influential Ibero-American women intellectuals by ESG Global. Lourdes is the author of Global Latinas, Latin America's Imagine Multinationals, and co-author of many journal publications and scholarly articles. She is also a member of multiple international organizations to include the Latin American Global Agenda Council and the Competitiveness in Latin America Task Force of the World Economic Forum. She's also responsible at INSEAD for Goldman Sachs, 10,000 Women Initiative, co-led uh, and co-led the Innova, Innova Latino on innovation in Latin America. Lourdes is a Fulbright scholar with a master's degree from the University of South Carolina and a PhD from the University of Barcelona. So please join me as we welcome Lourdes. <laughs> Just, uh, many, uh, just a few words of thank you because it has been a tremendous closing to many of you two years, three years, four years of uh, being at Cornell, being with the EMI Fellows uh, Program. Uh, the EMI, we reach many things, but we reach many things because of you. It's a very slim uh, uh, organization. It's thanks to you, thanks to your passion, your hard work, and here we have Julian Galarza, who, as he said, was with us before he joined the program. And uh, he was instrumental for two case competitions. It's a tremendous amount of work, of learning, of, uh, of working with many different organizations. And Julian did a tremendous job. Also, uh, he would sit next to me and said, we have to reorganize them. I said, Julian, please, no more work. <laughs> Don't reorganize it. <laughs> but yes, he always gave, gave tremendous advice as a consultant at heart. I know that Payne will enjoy very much all that he has to give. And uh, he was tremendous. So Julian, very, very grateful. Matus, as he said, he joined a little bit reluctant because of his friend Julian. And at the end, at the end, he was with uh, Iman, uh, chairs of the of the pitch competition, and it was a tremendous amount of work. And now we have Osagi here with Carlos, who are taken over, and Jim, who has been very helpful. Also, Sana, uh, we had uh, no one at the MS Health. We had one or two students, and then she rallied uh, the, the, the team and brought a tremendous group. And, Every program brings, brings their own their own thing that is different. Also, wanted to thank so many of you, uh, Natalia, the Harsh, uh, the my class at the at the Cornell Tech did the first selection of the pitch competition. Of the thirty six startups were competing from all over the world. We had to choose five, and they did the first work. So again, we do a lot, and we do a lot because all of you. We have Tyler who working fintech was a fintech scholar and did a lot on 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 that we are working on central bank digital currencies and he was instrumental then we have now here chase who joined this year and did a tremendous work you know regulation on ai so comparing regulations in different countries so i learned so much from all of you i enjoy i share your passion I mentioned some, I, I have uh, here Hars Modi, I don't know if I mentioned you, who was leading uh, the, thank you Hars, who was leading the um, the pitch competition first evaluation. It's all a tremendous amount of work. Iman and, and Angie who have organized this tremendous graduation. Yesterday I, I met Nana, I said, Nana, she's a, an event planner first year, and I said, Nana, we need your help to organize the graduation tomorrow. So Nana, Laís, 
Abby, Abby, we, we all have an accent, Abby. Please read the games without an accent. And he came and did. And of course, Daniel, who is the program coordinator. So thank you very much. Let me see if I forget. So I'm sure I forget some people. And uh, who? Yeah, Sivani also, who is here. Sivani was amazed by so many uh, awards that you got. <clears throat> Those of you who have come to the Columbia Tech last year and this year, and you did, you contributed to the development of the country because out of sheer volunteer work, you help so many SMEs from Colombia. And, and that is amazing to see how you work with them. Sometimes you continue working with them, SMEs from Colombia. So the commitment to the improvement of emerging markets. In this program, in, the, in Cornell, in your two years, your minds have changed. All of you, all of you, you come out differently from last, from when you enter because, because of Cornell, because of the power of all of you, because of the intellectual power, the, the eagerness to learn, you all have changed your mind and that's good. You have all of you listen to the other side. In my class this time, I introduced debates. I, because I now I go to Oxford because of personal reasons, and I saw the Oxford debate <laughs> in the Oxford <laughs> Union. So I said, okay, let me introduce. So we introduce the debates, and that's very, very important in this very pol polarized world. And I thought it was super interesting. And here in EMI, we listen to the other side. We listen to many emerging markets, and definitely uh, tremendous. And then remember that now is the moment, is the moment to say thank you and to give back. First, you have to give back to your families, your loved ones, your friends. This has been repeated a number of times that have allowed you to reach where you are. And then to society at large, and of course, to Cornell as well. You, you, be, you are becoming now part of the Cornell family. Wherever you go, you will be in touch with uh, Cornell at large. And that's a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous work. Also, El Nas, I haven't thanked El Nas enough also, because El Nas uh, does the social media, allows us to get into, uh, into the world through social media. And then, last but not least, Dean Andrew Caroli. Dean Andrew Caroli has been a tremendous support of the BMI, and I am forever, forever grateful. And again, today, for instance, President of Colombia, you can imagine how many invitations he, get, he got and how much time is dedicating this week to EMI, to Cornell, to interact with all of you on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, he spent one week in Cornell Tech and he spoke to many of you, so definitely president, very, very, very grateful because of course being president of a country is, is a tremendous, tremendous privilege and all, sharing all your knowledge that you have during your four years of public service at the top. And you continue to do public service because you continue to be engaged with your country, with your with the region, and with the world through your work on environmental to improve the, the green transition. So thank you very much, President. And also Jeff Dean from Hong Kong, as he said, he's now a triple family of Cornelians and now your wife as well, so board. So definitely, and he was the president of the Johnson uh, Alumni Association in Hong Kong for many years. <laughs> and he's still extremely involved, so very, very, very grateful. And uh, just, we have two more things to do. One is a group picture. And second is, uh, we are going to sing the alma mater. So uh, right. we'll do, we'll do, uh, we'll be, from now on, you have to sing the alma mater because it will be singing the alma mater in many yeah. uh, Cornell, uh, events. So thank you. So the, the thing that we were rehearsing before then, uh, please come and, and we'll sing the other and then please don't leave. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll have also the group picture. Thank you all and uh, very the alma mater is also on the back of your pamphlets that you have, so. He knows how to do this. You know, you learn. Just call
I'm here to serve whatever I can do. Yeah, 